welcome to this celebration of the Holy Eucharist. Today, the Feast of the Holy Cross. Begin with the hymn 133, Jesus keep me near the cross. In 133. Jesus keep me near the cross. There's a precious fountain. Almighty God, 
who son our Savior Jesus Christ was lifted high upon the cross that he might draw the whole world to himself. Mercifully grant that we, who glory in the mystery of our redemption, may have grace to take our cross and follow him, who lives and reigns with you and the Holy Spirit, one God, in glory everlasting. Let us sit for the reading of Scripture. Oh, 
said, Now is the judgment of this world. Now the ruler of this world will be driven out. And I, when I am lifted up from the earth, will draw all people to myself. He said this to indicate the kind of death he was to die. The crowd answered him, We have heard from the Lord that the Messiah remains forever. How can you say that the Son of Man must be lifted up? Who is this Son of Man? Jesus said to them, The light is with you for a little longer. Walk while you have the light, so that the darkness may not overtake you. If you walk in the darkness, you do not know where you are going. While you have the light, believe in the light, so that you may become children of light. The Gospel of Christ. Let us pray. In the words of my mouth and the meditation of all our hearts, be accepted in your sight, O Lord, our strength and our Redeemer. Amen. Please be seated. Today the church focuses on the Holy Cross of our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ. And it's a remarkable thing when, you, when we consider and ponder what God does in terms of taking things and then recreating them in a manner that is worthy of himself. In the beginning, in the book of Genesis, we read that there was chaos, there was a lot of chaos, everything was not together. And God took what was chaotic, put it into order. God took one man and, and said to him, I will make you into a whole generation of people, more than the signs on the seashore, on the stars, in the heavens. Not that he alone was worthy, but all will be worthy of God at some point in time. What we lack many times is patience, understanding. For God took in Jesus Christ's own son the emblem of shame and disgust. The sign of the cross is a sign of total embarrassment. And yet God took that and made it the emblem of salvation. And that's something remarkable. But when we think about the cross, not the jewels that we may have, not the crucifix that we are, we are coming with where everything is, is nice and dainty, but think about the cross itself. The blood-stained wood on Calvary where our Savior hung. And during the Friday, you would hear these words, Behold the word of the cross, and which hung the Savior of the world. Jesus came so that we may find life in him. But all life goes through the process of having to die. All life. All life. Yeah? And God gives life where people believe there can be none. And that's what the cross really is. The cross is the hope of the resurrection. In the Gospel passage today, the Jews came and they said to him, but the law says that the Messiah lasts or lives forever. He doesn't come to an end. How can you say he has to be lifted up? In other words, we don't expect him to die at all. He must conquer everything. But yet the one thing that we all need to conquer, they have forgotten. That God must also conquer sin and death. Not so? For God to be God, to show us that He is in fact who He is, He must conquer sin and death. And He goes to the cross. God is the God of life and, and, and living. The God of righteousness. The God that builds us up, the God that tells us that we can be more than what we are. And so the Messiah is forever. But the cross is not the end of the journey, but rather it is the fatal blow. That's what the, the cross is, the fatal blow. Satan cannot overcome the cross. In fact, He's not really present as he was at Gethsemane when he tells when he's trying to tell Jesus, you know, 
turn away from this and Jesus would pray for them if it's possible. Let us not pass from you. But as the passion of Jesus Christ begins and continues and ends on the cross, Satan is defeated. There are some people who want Satan to win. There will always be those who are trying to resurrect Satan in some, in some way to show that he has some kind of power. But if we have the cross of Jesus Christ before us, Satan's legions flee. Not so? On what Christian soul is what? On to victory. Why? Why? Huh? With the cross of Jesus going on before. Yes? Do we give recognition to that cross and the power that it has? Do we have a crucifix in our home that has been blessed to recognize the power of God in our life? Do we contemplate really and truly as the church asked us to do on Fridays, except the Fridays of, of Christmas and Easter, but on Fridays, every Friday of the year, it says to us, we should be contemplating the passion of Jesus Christ. For we too must take up our cross and follow him. Yeah? We too must get to our own Calvary. We too must suffer for the sake of others. We too must find that God is always near so that we can say to our God, Father, into your hands I commend what? My spirit. And when the work of salvation was done, Jesus says, it is finished. This is the part people don't understand. The culmination of everything. I came not to abolish the law, but to fulfill it. But then Jesus, the last words of the process, it is finished. It is finished. Everything that human beings fail to do, that God asks them to do, God in Jesus Christ fulfills it for us. Because we are incapable of doing it. So while we take up, not a literal cross, but a spiritual one, sometimes we don't even want that. We want somebody else's cross because it looks easier to carry. God gives each one of us the cross that is the right size and the right fit for us. Stop looking at other people and thinking that they're not carrying any cross at all. Because those who are not carrying a cross are already condemned. They've turned away from God. Anyone who turns to God will find a cross over their shoulder. Anyone. You want to give your life over to God? The cross is to defeat Satan. That's why you carry the cross. You don't carry the cross because God wants you to suffer. We, we carry the cross because God wants us to defeat Satan. You understand that now? Don't shy away from it. Satan wants us to put down the cross. He wants us to run away. He wants us to say to God, let this cup pass from me. I'll be real disciples of Jesus Christ. As we think about what happened on this day, what the church commemorates, Monica, it's not Monica, the mother of Constantine, who on this day claimed that she fallen the true cross of Jesus Christ outside of Jerusalem. Do we recognize that such people wanting to know their Lord more, never give up hope that they can find and recognize and worship and honor God. Because everything that God sanctifies is worthy of praise of thanksgiving because he himself has touched it. If he touched the woman and they are healed, 
and he is on the cross and he's touched the cross, how much more can we be healed when we too approach the cross of Jesus Christ? At exorcisms, when demons are sent to the foot of the cross, they're not sent into heaven for judgment. They're sent to the foot of the cross for judgment. It's there. It's the price of salvation being paid. Now is the judgment of this world, Jesus says. Yeah? When the Son of Man is lifted up, now is the judgment of the world. And we want the world to be judged later on, not so? It is judged already. And we continue to have people, many people, who are found wanting. Because they were looking for a judgment to strike down everyone. Yes? Everyone that wasn't holy, God is striking them down. And God is striking them down because those who will not submit to the cross of Jesus Christ have already been struck down. And that's the miraculous, awesome thing about the cross of Jesus Christ. When I survey the what? The wondrous cross. It wasn't wondrous at the time. When Jesus was making his way up to Calvary and he met the women of Jerusalem and they were weeping over him. And he said to them, women of Jerusalem, do not weep for me. But weep for yourself and for your children. Because you think that this ends disaster. But it ends with the glory of God. And whatever we do, sisters and, and brother, whatever we do in this life, if we are doing it for God, will never end in disaster, but will end with the glory of God. You understand that? Yes. So we must ask ourselves, are we doing what we are doing for God or are we doing it for ourselves? What are we doing it for? Am I doing it because I know this is my cross to bear? And do I rejoice when I have to bear my cross? Or am I crying every day because I want life to be easy? I don't want no trouble at all. Trouble will cease when we are in paradise. Show me any, any part of this world that is really a paradise. Show me a place in this world that somebody could show you beauty one day and not show you destruction the next. This world is not a paradise. Nor should we be forcing this world to become a paradise. We should be forcing this world to be paradise and we are always pushing God out. And we believe that we can make paradise on our own. But we can't make anything. We can't even make our own way to heaven. This is why Jesus has called me. Walk while you still have the light with you. So that those who are in darkness, what they stumble and fall. But you must have the light of Christ in you. And he reminds us of all these things. You are the salt of the earth and everything else. We are to be different. Yeah? You are in the world but not of the world. Our true home is with God. And to get there, we must deny ourselves, take up our cross, and follow Him. Jesus does not ask us to do anything that He Himself was not willing to do faithfully. Faithfully. Yes? He fell, but he did not stay on the ground. Some people fall, and then they fall in love with the ground. Yeah? Isn't that true? Yes, yeah, some people fall, and they fall in love with the ground. They don't want to stand anymore. They always want to be the victim. 
Jesus looked like the victim, but he was really the victor. You understand? He did not allow Satan to keep him on the ground. He got up. Amid the, the whippings and the jails and the crown of thorns and everything else, he pressed forward. Praying not only for the Roman soldiers, but for us. Father, forgive them, because they do not know what they are doing. Yes? Never uttering a word of thirst. Even when he was thirsty and they gave him vinegar to drink. Yes? To all of it. Because this is what humanity has done to God throughout the ages. We lie to God. We hide from God. We want all kinds of things from God, but we do not worship God in spirit and in truth. We give other people higher titles than God at times. We bow to other men and women and kiss their hands or kiss their feet. But we will not do the same for God. These are the things that we must consider. Even the way that we may enter the church knowing that we are in His presence. If you came in here and you saw the President and the Prime Minister, how different would your entrance into this place be? But when you come, you always meet someone greater than the President, the Prime Minister, or even the Bishop. You always enter and you meet God. But we don't give him the same kind of respect and honor as we really do his name. Today is a day to reset our thinking, reset our minds, to bring the cross back into our homes and into our communities. The cross of Jesus Christ. Not just a piece of wood, will it? Bring back the cross of Jesus Christ into our schools. Bring back the cross of Jesus Christ into our parliament. Bring back the cross of Jesus Christ into this country. Stop running and turning away from God, hoping to get everything. See, first the kingdom of God and His righteousness. I'm going to add here, I'm changing the scripture a little bit. I don't have the authority to do it, but I'm still doing it. Okay? By taking up your cross and following Him. Seek first the kingdom of God and His righteousness by taking up your cross and following Him and everything else will be given to you that the Lord has in store for you. Stop demanding from God the things that He wants to give you but you are not prepared to use. All the people who want to claim everything from God, want to claim health, and we want to claim wealth, and we want to claim everything else. Where is the testimony? Where is it asking God, I claim faith in your name, so that I may proclaim what I've heard in church on the rooftops? Why don't we understand that all things work for good? For those who believe and trust in God. That even if we are sick, that when we may be praying for God to heal us, we should be praying more that our illness brings glory and honor to His name. That's what we should be praying for because everybody gets sick. How many Christians just die of natural causes? You die of all the wrong kinds of things. Natural causes just do it. Oh. Right? <laughs> but we die of all different kinds of things. Why do we want a life that is less than what our Lord showed us? His death was not, by our standards, a glorious death. It was a horrible death, not so. But God brought glory to his death. God 
brought glory to his death. So that even in our own little suffering that cannot be compared to that, God can bring glory to our death as well because it's a testimony of our faith that we believe in God. That death is not the end. Our Lord has conquered sin and the grave. And because I believe and trust in Him, because I took up my cross, I know that my Lord will raise me up as well. We have to learn to stop living in fear and trust in God. Respond to God in love as we would want to respond to our neighbors and our friends in love. Stop being ashamed. It is one of the things that we say at baptism. When you baptize a child or adult, we say that you will not be ashamed of Christ crucified, but fight valiantly against all evil all the days of your life. That's from baptism. Do not be ashamed of Christ crucified, but fight valiantly against all evil all the days of your life. The Satan is just prowling around looking to see who he can devour. Let the cross always stand between you and Satan and his minion. Let it always be there so that you may be protected from him. Do not put down that guard that God has given to us. Call upon Him and the shield of the cross will always be there. Call upon Him and God will respond to His children who are ever in But do not turn away from Christ. Amen. We say the words of the Apostles' Creed, today being the Feast of Faith of the Holy Cross, page 106. I believe in God, the Father Almighty, Creator of heaven and earth. I believe in Jesus Christ, His only Son, our Lord. He was conceived by the power of the Holy Spirit and born of the Virgin Mary. He suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, died, and was buried. He descended to the dead. On the third day he rose again. He ascended into heaven and is seated at the right hand of the Father. He will come again. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Holy Catholic Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the Lord, and the life everlasting. Amen. So we bring our prayers and intercession before God our Heavenly Father. Today we use form H on page 120. Let us pray for the church and for the world. Grant Almighty God that all confess your name, may be united in your truth, live together in your love, and reveal your glory in the world. Lord, in your mercy, Guide the people of this land and of all the nations in the ways of justice and peace. They may honor one another and serve the common good. Lord, in your mercy, give us all a reverence for the earth as your own creation, that we may use its resources rightly in the service of others and to your honor and glory. Lord, in your mercy, Bless all whose lives are closely linked with ours, and grant that we may serve Christ in them and love one another as He loves us. Lord, in your mercy, comfort and heal all those who suffer in body, mind, or spirit. Give them courage and hope in their troubles, and bring them the joy of your salvation. Lord, in your mercy, 
we commend it to your mercy all who have died, that your will for them may be fulfilled. And we pray that we may share with all your saints in your eternal kingdom. Lord, in your mercy, hasten, O Father, the coming of your kingdom, and grant that we, your servants who now live by faith, may with joy behold your Son is coming in glorious majesty. Even Jesus Christ, our only mediator and advocate. Amen. The act of penitence. If we say we have no sin, we deceive ourselves and the truth is not in us. If we confess our sins, God is faithful and just. And will forgive our sins and cleanse us from all unrighteousness. Page one to eight, 
begin with the alpha trig frame B on page 126. Father, we all make these gifts which are given us. This bread, this wine, this money. With them we offer ourselves, our lives, and our good to become through your Holy Spirit a reasonable, holy, and lively sacrifice. As this bread and wine become the body and blood of Christ, so may we and all your people become channels of your love and save Christ our Lord. And so we offer this Mass today for the retired Bishop Calvin Best, for Deacon Mark, who serves at the parish of the Holy Cross in Marabella. We also lift up before God, John, the wife of our Bishop Paul. We pray for them. We pray for this diocese as we are in our celebratory mode of 150 years of discipleship and witness in Trinidad and Tobago. The Lord be with you. Lift up your hearts. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is right and a good and joyful thing always and everywhere to give you thanks, Father Almighty, everlasting God. Through Jesus Christ our Lord, for our sins he was lifted high upon the cross, that he might draw the whole world to himself. And by his suffering and death, he became the source of eternal salvation for all who put their trust in him. Therefore we praise him. Joining our voices with angels and our angels, with all the company of heaven, who forever sing this hymn to proclaim the glory of your name. Holy, holy, holy Lord, God of power and might, heaven and earth are full of your glory. Hosanna in the highest. Blessed is he who comes in the name of the Lord. Hosanna in the highest. For thee is one. Or zero. All glory, praise, and thanksgiving be unto you, O Lord, Holy Father, Almighty, everlasting God. You created the world of all mankind, and of your tender mercy you gave your only Son, Jesus Christ, to take our nature upon him and to suffer death upon the cross for our redemption. He made it there by his own oblation of himself and offered a full perfect and sufficient sacrifice, oblation and satisfaction for the sins of the whole world. And he instituted and in his holy gospel commanded us to continue a perpetual memory of his precious death until his coming again. Hear us, O merciful Father, we most humbly beseech you, and be pleased to accept, bless and sanctify these the gifts and creatures of bread and wine, that they may be for us the body and blood of your Son, our Savior, Jesus Christ. For on the night that he was betrayed, he took bread. And when he had given thanks to you, he broke it, and gave it to his disciples, and said, Take this and eat it. This is my body which is given for you. Do this for the remembrance of me. And after supper, he took the cup of wine, and when he had given thanks, he gave it to them and said, Drink this all of you. This is my blood of the new covenant, which is shed for you and for many for the forgiveness of sins. Whenever you drink it, do this for the remembrance of me. In faith we acclaim you, O Christ. Dying, you destroyed our death. Rising, you restored our life. Christ Jesus, come in glory. Now, therefore, O Lord and Heavenly Father, we, your servants, and all your holy people, having in remembrance the blessed passion, mighty resurrection, and glorious ascension of your beloved Son, do offer unto your divine majesty this bread of eternal life, and this cup of everlasting salvation, rendering thanks to you for the wonderful redemption which you have made possible for us in him. And we beseech you, O Father, to accept upon your heavenly altar the sacrifice of praise and thanksgiving, 
and to grant that by the merits and death of your Son, Jesus Christ, and through faith in his blood, we and all your whole church may obtain remission of our sins and all other benefits of his passion. And we pray that by the power of your Holy Spirit, all who shall be partakers of this Holy Communion may be filled with your grace and heavenly benediction and be numbered in the glorious company of your saints. And here we offer and present unto you, o Lord, ourselves, our souls and bodies, to be a reasonable, holy, and lively sacrifice. And although we are unworthy to offer unto you any sacrifice, yet we beseech you to accept this, our bounden duty and service, not weighing our merits, but pardoning our fences. Through Jesus Christ our Lord, by whom, and with whom, and in whom, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, all honor and glory be unto you, O Father Almighty, throughout all ages, the world without end. As our Savior has taught us, so we pray. Our Father in heaven, hallowed be your name. Your kingdom come. Your will be done on earth as in heaven. Give us today our daily bread. Forgive us our sins, as we forgive those who sin against us. Save us from the time of trial, and deliver us from evil. For the kingdom, the power, and the glory are yours. Now and forever. The third form for the breaking of the bread. This is the true bread which comes from heaven. Lamb of God, you take away the sin of the world. Lamb of God, you take away the sin of the world. Lamb of God, you take away the sin of the world. The gifts of God for the people of God. And as we approach the altar to receive the Blessed Sacrament, see Jesus Christ who was crucified for all of us. See the cross of Christ illuminating our path. See him who is the light and light of the world. Come and receive with joy and thanksgiving. Sanitize your hands. Go to the left or to the right. Remove your mask. Go to the side and put your mask back on and return to your seat. Thank you for your cooperation.
Lincoln 617, 617, once only once and once for all. 617. Sunday of this month, 
we will have only one service in the parish at St. Matthew as we celebrate the Feast of Titles uh, at St. Matthew on that day. At nine, beginning at 9.30 a.m., the Reverend Daniel Pontefract Andrew will be the celebrant and preacher for that service. And then the week following, which will take us into October, the 2nd of October, to be precise, we will have our own harvest and feast of title celebration here at St. Michael and All Angels. There's again one service in the parish on that Sunday at 9, beginning at 9.30 a.m. and the Reverend Father Aaron Charles from the parish of St. Christopher in Sicaria will be coming to um, be the celebrant and preacher on that day. So we do look forward for you to come out, uh, come and have a good time participate in the school, help us to raise some, some money as we are set again to pay our insurance in November, so please, whatever extra you can, can give, we will be happy for that. Alright? Confirmation class has resumed, or has begun. Registration will close at the end of this month, so if you know any young person, uh, please inform their parents that the registration exercise is ongoing until the end of this month. Okay? The Lord be with you. Let us bless the Lord. Go in peace to love and to serve the Lord. Do have a very wonderful rest of the day, everyone. Please be mindful of crowds and, and, and sanitize and wear your mask when you have deep, deep crowds and if you have to go anywhere that uh, it's a little bit sketchy. Be on that. Uh, extra loops, okay? Have a good day.